Well, I'm Pastor Jim Peters, and you are joining us at our Savior's Lutheran Church for worship on this seventh Sunday within the season of Easter. And of course, that means that we are almost at the very end of the Easter season. And this is a time when the church as a whole looks forward to celebrating Pentecost, which is now just a week off. And in our gospel that we're going to share at this service today, you'll hear Jesus' care and compassion for all of his followers. And that includes all of us. Uh, this is a very comforting gospel reading, so I hope that you will take comfort in it as well. And I thank you so much for joining us for this worship today. We'll begin our worship with our gathering hymn. If you have a hymnal, it is hymn number 650, In Christ There Is No East or West. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And also be with you.
astray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for today's children's sermon, so good morning, girls and boys. Uh, I'm assuming at this point that you have had your last day of school, uh, even if it's been online school, but uh, that you're uh, off for the summer. So I want to wish you all a very happy summer. I want you to think about a time, about the last time that you had your picture taken. And maybe you had your picture taken earlier in the school year. And if so, how many were in that picture? One, right? Now, I want you to see if you can see a picture of your family from where you're sitting right now. If you can, how many are in that picture? Well, one way to answer that question would be to look at the number of people who are in the picture and then make that your answer, whether that's three or four or even more than that. But there is another way to answer that question, and that is to say that there is only one in that picture, one family. When you think about it, there are several different ways that we can be one. We can be one person, one family. We can be one classroom at our school. And we can be one church. In the gospel story that we're going to share today, we'll hear Jesus praying to God that his followers will be one just as God and Jesus are one. And I think Jesus wants his followers to be together in several ways, in love, in holiness, in mission, in identity. Even though we're living in a time when uh, we can't gather together in big groups, I want you to remember that we are still one with each other in the church. And we're also one with God and with Jesus as well. And that is never going to change, and we can all draw strength from that. Now let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for the beautiful weather that we've been having. We thank you for your presence with each of us. We ask you to continue to build us up in love for you and in love for one another. Keep us all strong and united as a family and as a church. We ask for all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord, Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. 
while he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward the heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem, for the mount called Olivet, when, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter, and John, James, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together and with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm will be read responsibly. Let God arise, and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and jo joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary at home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel. Give strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second reading is from Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange was happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
from the Holy Gospel, according to the 17th chapter of St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son might may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are, they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. It's the next to the last Sunday of this Easter season. An Easter season that has been like none we have ever experienced before. And probably hope and wish that it's something that we'll never have to do again. But next Sunday, May the 31st, is Pentecost Sunday. And after that, this Easter will be over. The beginning of our celebration of the resurrection of Jesus is now firmly in our rear view mirror. Up ahead is the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit. We just celebrated the Ascension of the Lord, and the Gospel that we have been given for this Sunday comes again from Jesus' farewell address to his disciples. And this time, we get the chance to hear Jesus in prayer. Jesus is praying for his disciples. And as long as you don't let this text become something that remains stuck in a book, it's easy to see that he's praying for all of us as well. And that's a good feeling, isn't it? To know that Jesus is praying for us. We know that Jesus prays out of his pure love for us. And so we can already know that his prayer represents the best of what God wants for all of us. This is not a prayer that is made with a helping of judgment on the side. This is a prayer made from the heart of God's unconditional love. Which is all well and good, but as the prayer went along, you may have found yourself tripped up by something that shows up right at the end of today's gospel. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me. As a part of his prayer, Jesus prays for our protection, which might raise a question or two. Have you felt protected? 
Have you felt protected in the last couple of months? I don't know, maybe you have. I mean, if you didn't get sick, and if no one you cared about got sick, I can see how you might be feeling that God was protecting you through the worst of the coronavirus. That God has been a shield for you, keeping the virus away. The only problem with that kind of thinking is that eventually you may start to wonder about those who actually did get sick and those who have lost a family member, a loved one, a friend to the virus. Does that mean that God wasn't protecting them? If you've been able to maintain a relatively normal way of life through all of this, and yeah, things have been strange and far from normal for all of us for a while now, but still, if you've been able to continue working at your job, even if you're now working from home, if you're still drawing a paycheck, if you've been able to go to school online and finish up the year, if you can still pay all of your bills and meet all of your commitments, then you have good reason to feel that you have been blessed. Because as crazy as it's been, it really could have been a lot worse. But what about the ones for whom it really has been worse? What about those who have been unable to work? Those who aren't sure how they're going to be paying all of their bills? What about those who were already just barely getting by before all this started, now push even closer to the edge? What about the ones who have been scammed out of their stimulus checks and their unemployment benefits? Have they not been blessed? Was God's shield not strong enough for them? The challenge that comes along with hearing this prayer for our protection is that it inevitably leads us to wonder how far that protection extends. Is God going to protect us from anything bad that could ever happen to us? I hope you already know the answer to that. Jesus himself was more than aware that there are plenty of things in this life and in this world that have the potential, at least, to do us harm. But his words, and his life, and his ministry, all work together to show us that these things are not what God really wants for us. But they can still happen to us anyway. So, what good is this prayer? What good is praying for our protection if that protection doesn't include keeping a deadly virus away from our door? Just a few verses on from where this gospel reading ends, Jesus starts to get a lot more specific. Protect them, he prays, from the evil one from the one who is actively working against God, who would dearly love to take hold of our hearts, our minds, our spirits. Now hear that, and you may end up thinking of some cartoon devil in red pajamas and holding a pitchfork, of something that belongs to 
some lesser, less grown-up age. But make no mistake, the evil one of whom Jesus speaks is much too subtle and much too subversive to show up in such an obvious way. Instead, you can find it wherever and whenever lies become more important than the church. Behind the words of the Father, who lets his children know in one way or another that his love for them is conditional and depends upon how they act or how successful they are. Somewhere under the words and the actions that suddenly tell youth that they have nothing to offer God and that God has nothing to offer them. Right alongside the attitudes of those who become convinced that the very best kind of protection can be found in money, in weapons, or in the status quo. Right alongside the thousands upon thousands of ways that that voice ends up speaking to us. For you, self-control is just about impossible. So go ahead and give in to it. All that stuff about turning the other cheek or giving up your cloak or forgiving 70 times 7 is just weakness and foolishness. So why even try? Change is not really possible. So go ahead and sink right back into your apathy, your indifference, your disillusionment. Sometimes even good things get twisted around and the evil one ends up using our worst impulses and our deepest fears to keep us from going on. That's why this prayer is so important. Because we are all, almost constantly, at war with all the lies. But God wants something better for us than lies. And so we need prayer to help protect us from the subversion. We need Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And thank God he's praying for us all. Amen.
please join with me as we profess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us peace in our city and peace in our world. Help us to be calm in the midst of fear. Please help all of our essential workers stay safe. And may you lead us all on towards hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Bless all those whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace. And also with you. Once again, I want to say thank you to all of you who have been sending offerings into our church. We appreciate your continuing support so much. And please remember that you can make a contribution to our church through our website by mailing your offering in or by dropping it off at the church during regular business hours. And again, thank you so much.
Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join all of our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from God and pride, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I have some actual announcements to share with you today. Uh, first of all, I hope that you are aware that our Executive Council has been working on a plan uh, for reopening our church. And uh, if you want to take a look at that plan, uh, a copy of it is available along with this weekend's bulletin. Uh, it's also linked in the midweek and on our website. Uh, so check it out. You can make comments to me or to any member of our executive council. I especially want to thank our council for all of their work on this. Uh, it's very thorough. Uh, and uh, you should be aware that our reopening the church really depends on when Kansas uh, goes into phase three of the plan. Uh, so that would mean for us that probably the earliest we could think about beginning to meet again would be the weekend of June 13th and 14th. But remember, that is not written in stone, and we're going to have to see how things go over the next couple of weeks. But uh, we will keep you informed about how we're going to move forward with this. Uh, I also want to remind you that uh, our church's blood drive is coming up. Uh, remember that this year, uh, the blood drive will not be taking place here at the church, but at uh, the Community Blood Center, uh, which has a location over on the west side of 29th Street. Um, that drive is going to run Monday, June 8th through Saturday, June the 20th. And uh, you have to make an appointment and register. And there, are informa there is information about how to do that uh, in our bulletin, and it's in the midweek, too. And I know that uh, Community Blood Center particularly needs donations at this time. So if you are able to donate, I really want to encourage you uh, to give some blood and uh, to do it as a part of our blood drive as well. And thank you in advance for your blood donation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, next Sunday we will be celebrating Pentecost, uh, which is a celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church. And even though we are still only meeting virtually, I want you to wear something red when you come to the service. Just kidding. <laughs> Finally, I want to wish you a happy remainder of this Memorial Day weekend. And let's all be grateful for the sacrifice of those who gave their lives in service to our country. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is 
is hymn number 656 in the hymnal, Bless Be the Tide that Binds. <laughs> Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. alleluia.